Is that? So I've uh, added the some more problems to, to this list. It's funny if I st if you start typing Kyoto problems, the spell checker suggest Kyoto Protocol. Start with a discussion. What, uh, what's a quantum group? <clears throat> Maybe first start with a finite group. A finite group. To find a group, we can associate uh, its group algebra. Let's say, let's say we're complex numbers. So this would be by the Peter Weil theorem. This is direct sum over the reps v of all in the morphisms. So in some sense they have this, this group and this, this algebra have the same representation theory, but there's some information lost, right? So you, you can't really, all the thing you remember is, is just dimensions of reducing. Like for example, all abelian groups of the same order, say so if I have an abelian group, You'll just get direct sum of fields. See, all this map remembers is just the order of the group. And so, um, how do you how do you remember remember the group in this map? And so the answer to this is the following: that this this is this is not just associative algebra. If we have a group, we have a tensor product of representations. So, if, so the, the group has a, a group of representations. So if we look at the representation of a group, this uh, representations. have tensor product. So if I have a, maybe. So actually in my notes, I think I, I denote, there's so many Vs in the subject, maybe I, I, um, I will change this to M module. So G acts, so an element G acts, in a tensor product of two modules by acting as G in the first factor and G in the second factor. This means from this algebra there is a homomorphism to its tensor square. Which sends which sends G to G and to G. So if I have a, a tensor, so if I have an algebra tensor product of two modules, naturally the module over tensor, tensor square. And so if I have a map from an algebra to its tensor square, I know how to act on module on tensor product of modules. So this is this means the group algebra of a group has an extra structure which a general algebra doesn't possess, 
They have a map from from the group from an algebra two standard. So this this map is compatible with, with so the fact that this is a group. So it's algebra homomorphism means a certain means a certain um, a certain axiom. And 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 the um, algebra satisfying such are called you know, this this extra structure, the structure of bi it's called bi-algebra. This, this, this map satisfies this map satisfies axioms dual to multiplication. So if I have a, for example, if I have a multiplication in the group, multiplication in in the social algebra is associative, and this co this is called co multiplication. Co multiplication is co associative. It means if I want to map to tensor product of three factors, I can use you use it in I in any way. So this is a very important structure. And the group itself, so the group the group G may be found inside C G as a set of non-trivial solutions. So maybe we call this map. It's a co-multiplication, usually denoted delta. So if you, if you solve equation delta of a equals a tensor a, and this is there's a zero solution, but the only non-trivial solutions are not just group elements. So this is a solution of such equation in the bi-algebra called group-like elements. This is say the group itself is just a set of group-like elements in it, in its uh, in its uh, in its uh, group algebra. Well, this is this is trivial, right? Because if I have an a, an element a, is a summation of some coefficients c i, g i, then then delta of a is summation c i, g i. Uh, GI, and this has to be equal. Oh. Where is this equal to, to to the product, which is summation over I and J, CI, CJ, GI, uh, GJ. This means so the only the only there's zero solution, and the only other solution so. Are, are, are delta functions. So to somehow to to um, to uh, stress the that this 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 structure of co-product has uh, has uh, you know, all the axioms there are are opposite to the axioms of multiplication. There is a notion of um, there is a notion of so there is a unit. Uh, we have unit, which is just the, which is the, the identity element inside G. The dual notion is the notion of co-unit. This is the trivial representation, which is the trivial representation. This is identity. Product. Right, if I take among all the representations, there's the distinguished one, trivial representation, such as with tensor with the trivial representation, we get our original representation back. And the axioms for this are you take the axioms of unit and you read them the other way around. I mean, somehow, all I, all, if you take all arrows and you reverse them, you get from the axioms from unit, you use the axioms of the And so, what is this? You can. I mean, this is also. This is also. This means. This means the co-unit. Uh, co-unit. 
what I denote in my notes. Maybe I denote it. And so co-unit of summation CI GI. Well, what's the, the action of this in the trivial representation is just summation CI. So the sometimes it's denoted, sometimes people write it that this is like the integral over the group. The identity is the is the delta function of the identity, and the dual operation is the integral of the group. So far, we've um, so far this applies. Doesn't have to be a group for this discussion to apply. It can be any can be any semi group. There's no. Uh, I mean, if it's a, if it's a semi group, it's just just as well. We, we haven't inverted anything anywhere. So then, the fact that it's a group it means we have an inverse of multiplication. So so this is. Inverse in group corresponds so corresponds gives gives the map S so this would be S sending summation C I G I this would be summation it's a linear map G I inverse and this has the property this anti this is anti automorphism This is clear, so it means, means S of A, B equals S of B, S of A. And the fact that this is inverse for multiplication, what does it mean? It means if I take, if I take, um, uh, so that density that the, the basic identity, this is g times g inverse equals g inverse times g equals 1. What does this identity mean? This means if I take, um, if I take any element a, and I apply, so if I apply a, if I apply co-product to that, so maybe s a is summation ci g i, if I apply co-product, then I get summation ci i. GI and GI. Then if I take now I can take antipod in either of the factors. It doesn't matter in which one. Maybe I'll take one tensor antipod, so I'm gonna get summation for CI, GI, then GI inverse. And now I use multiplication. So there's multiplication map from the tensor square of the algebra to the algebra itself. And so this is this is one. And so I'm gonna get CI times times the density in the group. And so this is this axiom means that so the the, an, the fact that antipode is inverse to multiplication in this sense, this says that if I take I take multiplication of one tensor antipode or antipode tensor one then tensor this. So what is this expression? This is first a linear function of my element A. So this is my integral of A. This is the co-unit. This is the co-unit composed with unit. And this is great that this is that this is this axiom is actually read symmetric. So multiplication, if you if you read it like you know, like the way the way the mod, so the the you can this is this is coproduct is a map from an algebra to a tensor square, so it's usually maybe denoted some, some tensor like this takes one element 
that makes it 2, then you apply antipode in either of the factors. So this is my, then you apply multiplication. And so then you get a map. And so that map is, is, a, is a composition of a canonical map from your algebra to the ground ring and from the ground ring to the algebra. So this is, so this is a get a map from. So this is my, I started with some of my algebra, maybe call it A. Go to A. And so then there is a map from A to ground ring. Ground field. So, yeah. axiom self dual, if you read it backwards, you get the same thing. It means that the, and in fact, all set of, all set of axioms for, for, uh, for here, for if you somehow read the, it's exactly self dual. I'm not going to write them all, you can find it in Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. so, 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 somehow this is. So axioms for um, for this product co-product axiom unit co-unit this gives you the notion called Hopfer. And why was Hope was interested in this? Well, it's because Hope, Hope used this to, to describe the homology ring of, of a Lie group, let's say a compact Lie group. Because this has a, has a product, product, and use the coercion of the cup product in homology, and coproduct coming from, from coproduct. Co-product coming uh, from the multiplication map in the group. So this is associative map. The dual map on the cohomology would be associative co-product on the algebra. And then Hobbes theorem says that then this has to be uh, exterior algebra on finitely many generators. But this is a very this is a very weak structure. And so in general, this is of how Somehow, typical examples of Hopf algebra have something to do with groups. Like, for example, functions on a group would fall. Functions on an algebraic group. I mean, say, if I take regular functions on an algebraic group, then then this has a commutative product and has a non-commutative co-product. This is in cohomology. This is uh, uh, so. If you, if, you, if you look at this. If this multiplication is non-commutative, then the dual operation, the co-product, would be clearly non-commutative on functions. Non so it's, let's see, non-commutative means non-co-commutative. Right? So commutative, commutative means, means m is equal to the same if you permute the factors. Permute the factors, multiply, get the same thing. And then there's notion of co-commutative, which is when when the co-product is the same as you use fact. So in general, neither has to be for for the for the group algebra of a finite group, the product of course is something, and then co-product is co-commutative. But if for for regular function on algebra group, this. The product is commutative, and the, and the dual operation is is not. In general, neither. And so, uh, so functions on an algebra group is an example of Hopf algebra. Uh, infinitesimal analog of of a group algebra. So if you g if uh, if g is um, now a Lie group, a Lie group. Or an algebra group. Then, uh, then, like I said, the regular functions on the group. This is commutative, non-commutative. Oh, 
algebra. Hope for algebra. Uh, the, the dual notion, which is more like, so this is, this is the group algebra. So here I don't write the brackets. This is more like, uh, you know, this is like a dual to that. So uh, there's a, you can take distribution on a group. It will be an example or, or a uh, more infinitesimal version of that if you take the universal developing of Lie algebra. So th these are distributions supported at the origin. This is, um, this is, the opposite. This is non-co-commutative, co-commutative Hopf algebra. Or if I have a, a set, so if I have psi here, I define, I define its co-product by the infinitesimal version of this relation. If I take this relation and I differentiate it at g equals one, so I'm going to get by Leibniz rule. I'm going to get this. And then the antipode is the derivative. So the derivative of inverse is minus. And the, the action of any sign of tri a trivial representation is zero. So that's a. And so usually when people say about, yeah. This this is commutative but non co commutative. Non co commutative. Yeah, I'm using. So usually these two examples, so these two examples, their deformation in the class of uh, Hopf algebras are usually called quantum groups. So this is, uh, this is what's usually called quantum groups. So if you deform and we especially will be interested in, in deforming this. So we want, so what we want is, uh, and so when we want to relate, so, so a quantum group of this type, we want to, what we want is to relate to spin chain. So specifically, in our example, specifically, we want to look at some particular. We will have. We want. We will want to look at some particular um, quantum group named what's called the Yangian. So it's the Yangian of GL2. This is a whole algebra deformation. of the universal evaluating of you take GL2 and you consider polynomials with values in GL2. It does have to be complex numbers here, but so this means this means polynomials. This these are polynomials with values in GL2 with commutator coefficient wise or point wise. That's all we So, and we will be the, the, 
there's, there's, a, there's a traditional way to present this algebra, namely by generators and relations. And uh, <coughs> which is something I'd rather avoid doing. And <coughs> because you can, you can, um, means it is very useful to, <coughs> to think about algebras by generators and relations. But it's sometimes even more useful to think about algebras in terms of the category of their representation. It's like, it's like uh, if you have an algebraic variety, of course you can define it by coordinates and equations. And it's a, this, is, this is certainly, uh, there's nothing wrong with, with you define algebraic variety by coordinates and equations. Uh, uh, but it's uh, from... Uh, trying to understand kind of deeper property of algebraic variety, it's much better to think about, you know, what's the category of coherent shift looks on this variety. Similarly, algebra is just like, you know, object of the same kind. Uh, so you can, you can define it by generators in relation. But it's, it's better, it's, you get, I think it, for, at certainly for certain, for certain purposes, it's, it's better to think about the category of its module, or some category of its module. And so, uh, and so, uh, right. So this is the. Uh, I I forgot to say before the. If you have a bi-algebra, then it's it's main. The the main way in which bi-algebra structure manifests in category of modules is is having a tensor product. And if I have um, an antipode then uh, the main way it manifests is that the category of module has duals. If I want, if I want my, my, my algebra to act in the dual vector space, I need an anti-involution, I need an anti-automorphism of my algebra. So, right, so this is, maybe as I forgot to say, so this is some to think. So, S makes, uh -huh, S results in duals. So two, two, two remarks. So first, as uh, this notion of duals in the category of A modules. In general, there are duals, there are left duals and right duals. So, but uh, yeah, let's not worry about it because S is unique. When exists. Uh, so it's the same thing in in uh, in in a group multiplied in a finite group. If it's a, if you have a, if I gave you a semi group, if it's a, if it is a group, you'll know it. It's not it's not like there's a, there's a if there is an inverse, then it's just set theoretic inverse will will, will be also the with some higher. If I, have a, if I have a Lie group, which is some kind, if I have a, like an algebraic monoid, which is a group, and the set theoretic inverse will be also algebraic inverse. And so, and so this is, uh, this is, uh, this is, we won't worry about so much. So this is, but we will, we will be interested in, 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 in but the tensor structure in the module, let's be paramount. And so, okay, so now, now back to this example, the main, or example like that, so more generally, so more generally you can take an algebra, the Yangian of some Lie algebra. This is this is a quantum this is something so if you have a Lie algebra tensor polynomials in one variable, then you consider a Hopf algebra deformation of such structure, then this is you'd call this a Yangian. Right. And so so very important thing is that this this um, this has an automorphism. Namely, namely, this is a function on the line. The line itself has an automorphism. And that automorphism will, will persist to, the, to this quantum group. And so if I have um, two modules, or any modules, so 
Yeah, maybe I'll call it. Or maybe plus A. Plus some constant A. So there is this. There is a corresponding automorphism. And so for any module, M in uh, oh, for any Y module M, I have a module M of A, which is obtained by pre so an automorphism of an algebra. I can precompose precompose with this automorphism and I get a new module. So this is like like this is what's a typical module over this Lie algebra. Well first you just send you send T to some constant, some some value. So then you just you send T to the some 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 number in my ground field. And then so then I get then I this I go to U of G L2. C. And then I can take any module here, so maybe call it some kind of module. And then I have uh, this would be, so to speak, a module sitting on at C. So if I if I act by this automorphism, this 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 low, this this moves around the position where I evaluate this. So these are, these are called evaluation modules. There are some the most important ones. So for any module, this is also a module. The main feature main feature is that the <coughs> uh, is that the this 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 algebra will be not co-commutative, right? Meaning that if I take m1, k1, and m2, m2, and of course there's a permutation of factors, which is, I mean, like I just, is, you know, is, is different. M2, A2, tensor M1, A1. Like, for example, if I permute for, for, that, for this Lie algebra, if I just permute the factors, this is an intertwining operator. And this is not, will not be the case. It's really different module. But the second thing is that, well, you can ask, well, I mean, how can it be really different? Because <laughs> Because after all, you know, what's, what's before the deformation? What's going to be? What's it going to be? We have some modules. So you know, think about this is certainly if you evaluate at two different points. When you have polynomials evaluated at two different points. Of course, you're going to get any algebra in the first factor, any anything in the first anything in the first point, and anything in the second point. Right? So you have a module. Like for example, if it's a, it's a reducible module, I can certainly get every upper. I mean, I mean certainly this tends to probably be irreducible if A1 and A2 are distinct. And you know, how bits <laughs> it's a different irreducible module with the same I mean, with the same game. It has like the same character and everything. And, uh, a, <laughs> you know, how can it be so different? So like you know, it can't really be different. And so the manifestation of that is that is that it's, it's really there exists for generic for generic a one and a two really a one since since there's automorphism that shift to one so I mean enough to require the difference of generic there exists non-trivial non-trivial trivial intertwiner.
which is usually denoted R check of it's a function of A1 minus A2 because the simultaneous translation is uh, is an automorphism. Which is a which is an intuitive line, yeah? This is this is not so this is not a permutation, and to highlight that this is not a permutation, usually you single out the the permutation and write R. What's called R matrix. This is not one, this R matrix. In other words, this matrix that so there are two ways to define this. You can you can either multiply in the opposite order, or we can use the opposite coproduct to make the algebra act on the same order. So the R matrix is an operator from you take from you take same order but the opposite coproduct. And so um, so this is not one, but this is this is this is a morphism for generic A1 minus A2. And in fact, what will be what will happen in this for this sort of modules for the formation of this kind of modules, this is in fact will be a rational function. Of a maybe a one minus a two, which is identity such that R of infinity is one. This is a normalization condition, not so not, not, not so important. But the fact that this is a rational function means so have a map, it has I mean have a map, some rational function, so it means the kernel and co-kernel of that map jump. Uh, right, so this is some kernel and co-kernel this map, some sheaf on the line of this A line, and this some um, so has some some sky. And those are the values. So generical there's nothing, but at certain values, the modules really are not isomorphic. In the typical scenarios where our modules are isomorphic, and then for a certain for a certain value of parameter, you get one is extension of two modules one way, and the other is extension of the module the other way. And so then you get then you get the kernel and core kernel of the so then and then the, like that, the the quotient of the first module goes to the stop of the second, that's your definer map. That kernel and co kernel say. And so, in, 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 in representation theory of phi of quantum groups that are So in representation theory, so there's there's um, there's you can ask why did I start with these polynomials? You know, I could have I could have started with just uh, with just the universal development of just the algebra itself. It's also you know, seems like a simpler thing. And uh, so if, if this I have a find a find say a find much Lie algebra, then um, then, then there's a similar notion, but there's no no place for this uh, for this uh, zeros and poles of this R matrix, and so then um, so then so this this operation having a non-trivial intertwiner between products in different order is called the braiding. Very very important thing. Here here you have a braiding, but the braiding is is a rational function of some variable. Slightly, slightly more complicated, but the very closely related notion. So, so maybe I'll call it just, I'll still call it braiding. And so that means the category, the category of modules of the kind of algebras that uh, I want to look at, this is a, this is a, a, a category that has tensor pro, it's a tensor category, it has duals. And it has this braiding, and um, and then there is a so for example for uh, 
and then there's general um, uh, general reconstruction theorem that says that any category, any abelian category with with such data is in fact a category of module over some Hopf algebra. So this is similar to the fact that if I have a, a tensor category which is which is a trivial braiding means the, the tensor product. So what is the uh, so how do I find so if I have a, so if I have a I mean, a special case of that, suppose I had a trivial brain, it means every product in one tensor order will be isomorphic to the product in the other. So if that is the case, then in fact, this is, um, such category will be modules over some, in fact, um, uh, you know, all, all algebra group. But, um, and so this is uh, the way to read it, there's a, like for example, there is a, a recent book by Etzengoff and many other people, if I can't remember them all, called Tensor Category. It's a very good book. You can recommend reading it. And so this, the, the point is that there's some general theorem to the fact that you can, you can um, if you have a, a category with certain properties, then it has to be modules over, uh, certain modules over certain whole algebra. However, there's also a, a completely a completely pedestrian way to so, so maybe I'll explain it now. So is there somehow so there's general so there exists a general reconstruction theorem. Oh I forgot to say, sorry. So this I forgot to say very important thing, very important notion. If you have right uh, no, no, it has to be the case. You have to assume that your category has a, what's called a fiber functor. It means has a functor two vector spaces. That, uh, be, like for, for representation, that, is, um, that means you just go to the underlying vector space. It's called a fiber functor because originally people were thinking about representation of fundamental group. And so then the, the fiber functor is just you take a fiber of your flat connection at some point. Uh, right. So this is I mean, there's some there's some uh, tensor categories of which about which it's unknown whether they have a fiber functor. So it's uh, so there's yeah, we already we, we 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 will be interested in things that are there are there vector spaces to begin with or maybe uh, free modules over some ring. So then then uh, this would be this would be the fiber functor would be given to us. So, in fact, but we're not going to use general theorem. There's a pedestrian, pedestrian reconstruction theorem. Pedestrian reconstruction theorem is um, uh, is um, is the following. So um, you start you start with a so, so we start so so the ingredient of this pedestrian reconstruction theorem are the bunch of is a bunch of vector spaces uh, or, or like I said you, could, you can consider modules some ring or I mean, vector space over fields good enough for, for us now you start with a collection of vector spaces. Start, and so you set the vector space as mi, and the operators are mi and j of ai minus, of some variable a, and this operator is. Um, Uh, so rational function. Okay. The G and G is one. This is again. This is maybe. So they they acting. And one. Okay. And satisfy satisfying. Same 
Yes, for equation. This comes from the fact that uh, that uh, if I have a tensor product, well, what's the young Baxter equation? Young Baxter equation says if I have a tensor product of three modules, I can put them in the opposite order in three ways. Sorry, in two ways. <laughs> so, uh, and then the equality of these two is is an is uh, so in this context. So if you have a um, you have a uh, module sum group, you you not necessarily. I mean, you could you, if you have two. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. So we we require that if I take so if I have the three so the three modules so one, one two and three. And I can put them in the opposite ways, in the opposite direction in two different ways. So I can first permute the first two, then this two, then uh, and this two. And th this overcrossing, undercrossing is not important here because they were, uh, uh, or or the or I can do the opposite. This is this means for this matrix R check, I have a relation which is uh, just the Coxter relation or or the braid relation. And for the matrix R, the relation becomes R. So I I'll drop uh, I'll, I'll write R12. This will denote R and one R and two. So the relation says that the R12 of A1 minus A2 times R13 of A1 minus A3 times R23 of A2 minus A3. This is equal the other way around. I'll just, well, the indices are the same. So this is the input of this reconstruction theorem, and the output would be output uh, would like the ca uh, a hope algebra. Y and the category of modules. Over Y such that R is the braid. Construction is, is first. So, 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 how we construct first? The first step, and the uh, point. First, we extend extend our matrices to tensor product of M I. This is this is done as follows. So if I want to buy some module M1, M2, and I want to braid it with M3, M4, M5, then uh, all I do Uh, 
Yeah, big. Uh, so I have some. So I apologize. Right. I have individual. So, so I, what I do is I just take a product over all crossings on this diagram. So in other words, my R matrix would be, so I look at the R matrix, M1, M1, tensor M2, and then I braid it with the M3, M4, M5. And this would be, so first I take the R matrix to 3, then, then I can take an I, it, then, so this is, just read it, I just read it from top to bottom, first crossing is this one, then I can take either of this, it doesn't matter. So then I take one, uh, one, say one, three, and two, four, and so forth. And you just, you see, if you have to bring this representation by this representation, well, you can do it by, by bringing M2 past this one, which is really, this diagram just tells you how to bring the factors in this past, past the factors there. And so this is, this newly defined, I mean, it's clear, that it's el you know, elementary to see that this is defined, it's also satisfied. So I will define why we'll be sitting in just the direct product. I'll define why as an algebra of operators in all possible, so direct product of all possible collections of endomorphisms of all possible Like, I'd like this to be modules over my algebra, and okay, well, I'll define my algebra as, as something that acts in all these modules. And how it is defined? So this will be taken by matrix element. So if I have some, maybe I have some, some module M, and I take some other module, maybe called of the same kind, maybe I'll take it, uh, uh, call it auxiliary representation. So I take, so if I take R representation, I take R, take some auxiliary space, maybe I'll call it, uh, M0, this auxiliary space, and my space. So I have an, a matrix, and I take the matrix element in of this R matrix in, in the space here. So it means I apply it to some vector. Uh, so this is, I apply it to some fixed vector. Better say. So, what does it mean? What does it mean? Takes a matrix element. It takes like a trace or auxiliary representation of uh, this times uh, a finite rank operator, some operator of the form. So, for example, operator of rank one. So, an operator of rank one 
would be um, some maybe a vector. A vector. What's a, that's a what's a good name for a vector? Uh, like we need to have a you know like a an element in zero and I have L an element in M zero dual. So then I have um then I have a um um like um uh, you know, rank one operator namely namely V goes to L of V times A. So maybe call this operator um something. Just just call it that. So times I here I have this my, my rank one operator and then this other factor I take. So this would be so so this would be if I take a trace over auxiliary space, if I take a matrix element in auxiliary space, then I get an element in endomorphisms of my M. So th this is sorry. This is um, this is not not quite done yet. We would like to endomorphism tensor. So this we would like. Right. So this would be so A was a very unfortunate choice since A is a, some A is some variable here. So maybe we call this variable U now. <laughs> so this is this is now our this is a rational function. Which we can also which we can expand in say in in around infinity since at u at the u equals infinity this identity it's not a very interesting operator maybe we expand it around infinity and we pick a coefficient so we pick a coefficient by coefficients. of the uh, matrices coefficients in the infinity expansion. So what do we need to check? That this is uh, it's really warm in this room. So um, This is uh, this is uh, this is tautologically a bialgebra. The reason it's bialgebra is really acts in all tensor possible tensor products. Right? If you think of if you uh, if you think con so concretely, what does it mean? Concretely, if I want the the uh, so like if I want to say that this is. Um, so, in other words, this is what does it mean? What's it? If I take a tensor product of this guy with itself, there's a natural map from this inf from this product to the tensor product by it with itself. Just because, just because the so once the set is already included in the other set. <laughs> but what does it mean concretely that if I take the the uh, I take the uh, my my uh, my R matrix. R matrix, it's an operator in the in this uh, 
in in the has somehow two entries, right? So, so there's a let me call it there's the zeroth entry and the first entry. And if I take it one tensor the coproduct. This is how it now is supposed to act in the tensor product of two things. And so that would be how it acts by the scheme. It now will have to act in, but by the scheme, if I, if I now in the, act in the tensor product of two things, so if I have a, here's my, was my M0, and now tensor product of two things. So this means I first have to I first have to braid M0 with M1 and then M0 with M2. So this means that if I take this coproduct, this is zero one, two. And if I take the matrix coefficient in the zeros factor and the coproduct in the second factor, that means I uh, I have to take this this the zeros coefficient in this expression. So it's concrete. All right. Now, uh, what are the, uh, why is the R matrix itself is, is the intertwine? I would like to say though, then if I'd like to say, so this means we have to compare R one, two, which is, after all, so R12 is, is this expression. So it's R01 with R02. Um, and now by young Baxter equation, this is the same as if I take R01 R02 zero two in or well, I have the Young Baxter equation here. So if I take them in the opposite order, then this is the same as if I take this one R one two here and R one two inverse there. So that this says that maybe I'll have it in different colors, so but this is by Young Baxter. R one two inverse R one two. So this says we're just just gonna copy this, so it will be R one two inverse R zero two one. This really says that the, the tensor product in one order is isomorphic to the tensor product with the other order if you apply this R. Right? So R is the braiding. It means that this means that my module, if I so this means that the, so my module m1 tends to run 2, my algebra acts on this module by the matrix coefficients of this. And now if I apply, if I'd like instead act on this in the opposite way, then I have to apply the R matrix. So R matrix is, is really is the braiding for this for this for this category.
Next. Where is any element in the Any element in the comitant Why? gives relation. Comitant in this in this in this big big space. Because suppose if I have a so suppose I have some operator. Suppose I have um, a non-zero intertwiner between some relation. So suppose I have some some map. We call it I don't know, like M one. Just just for the sake of the argument, but some map I'm going to some M three, some map five, which is an intertwiner. This means I, I can take this. What does it mean? That if I take if I take this guy and I tensor it with any uh, anything else, then this map commutes with all our matrices. So. Takes take. I mean, what does it mean to commute with all with all elements of the Yang? I mean, so if I take the R matrix between this module and that some some other module and this module some other module. Then I get, then I get uh, uh, the quality of R matrix. But now I can read this also backwards, this relation. I can read backwards and says that this means some particular matrix coefficients of R matrix are equal to some other matrix coefficients of R matrix. Okay, so this means, this means relation. In this case, would be something quadratic equals, I mean, some kind of quadratic relation my Youngian equals something linear. I mean, could be, I don't know, five factors on one side. When some, some, maybe, you know, could be direct sum of many tensor factors. Could be some polynomial relation in my Youngian. For example, we have the R matrix. So, in particular, there's an R matrix itself. So, there's a, there's for any, for any one, one and two. We can put them in a different order using the R matrix. It's an example of it. And then this says, then this says the, the R matrix itself is an example of a commutation relation. It tells you if I take, so it means I take some I have a quadratic relation in my Yangi. Because what's a, a matrix element, a matrix element matrix elements in here, since it's a matrix element in my tensor product, in my tensor product, in the two, the, the, you know, like, a, like a matrix element in the tensor product is a, te is a product of matrix element. So a matrix element in here is some quadratic expression in our matrices, in my original R matrices, and then it's equal to some other quadratic expression in the original R matrices. It's really. And so what's this relation deformed? So if I have a if I have a like a semi-simple algebraic group acting in some, so if I have a concretely we were uh, we we can ask for like I don't know like GLN or GL2. Let's see. This acts in uh, in direct sum from uh, k goes from zero to infinity and uh, c two times the power k. <laughs> the the 
this is, is going to be a very not very interesting statement here, which is says, says, says so this, uh, the matrix elements of this representation are all possible, are all possible, in fact, somehow, you know, all possible polynomial expression in the matrix coefficients of so. So there's, there's means if I have, if I have a, if I have a, so, so the action of JL2 just acts on C2, the matrix coefficients of this are the, uh, are the coordinates in, in my group, in defining representation. And so this, this are all polynomial, the matrix coefficients here are all polynomial expression in my group. And so, and the only thing that they satisfy, and since it's an open set, an open set of a vector space, the only thing that they satisfy is that, is that they, uh, they all, you know, they're commutative polynomials. Right, so if I take, if I write some, so this is, so this, this acts by matrices, you know, x1, 1, x1, 2, x2, 1, x2, 2. This comes from the x2. And so the, the, the fact that this, this, uh, this, the representation in different orders are the same, just means the polynomials, you know, x1, 2, x2, 1, equals, just really, just commute. But if I had a, some subgroup in here, then there'll be more, there will be more, uh, like for example, if I, if I instead of, uh, if instead of, um, the full linear group I took like orthogonal. Let's say, let's for the sake of argument, call it R. This is, okay. If I have some subgroup, then of course I have more in very more intertwines. Like for the orthogonal group, there would be uh, there would be uh, uh, in a quadratic. Uh, there's an intertwiner between. C square, C R tensor square, and the trivial representation. And that intertwiner corresponds to an extra relation that I have in uh, in orthogonal group. In, in, in general, there's a there's a there's a relation due to you know going back to Hermann Weyl by saying that if I want to describe if I want to describe the uh, if an algebraic group and I want to describe its image in the representation, this is the same as being able to decompose all tensor powers of the representation. And this is, this, is a, this is a deformed version of that, in particular the, the invariance with respect to symmetric group it becomes, well, it's broken, there's an R matrix instead of symmetric group. They don't exactly commute the, the generators of the eigen. They commute, there's an R matrix which enters this commutation relation. And similarly, if I, have a, if I were thinking about the orthogonal group, that there'll be the square of the defining representation will be non-trivial intertwined with that in the trivial representation. That will be a relation. So, um, all right. So, um, so this is why I have, um, but this is a little a detour, maybe. But the, uh, so as the name suggests, yang baxter relation, this is some relation that arose in, uh, in quantum integral system long before the invention of quantum groups by Greenfield and Jimbo. So, um, and so this is, this is the, um, the reason, so the, the Young-Baxter equation is, uh, is, was a way to, um, so maybe the Baxter, Baxter idea. Baxter idea is that the Young-Baxter equation gives rise to, uh, to interesting, interesting commuting algorithm. This is this is how this quantum integral spin chain 
this is this is this is the story which I'm going to try to tell now. And and this this pre this this discussion here is that the so the the uh, the maybe sorry if I uh, maybe could I be forgiven for oversimplifying history dramatically? But this is uh, especially since it's being videotaped, so this is maybe it's maybe not a good idea. But uh, but the somehow when when the quantum groups were invented by Jimbo and Drinfeld, so this is this is was I mean still is a very important source. So there's like a you know, there's a source the quantum groups. It's a very important source of solutions to Young Baxter equation. So there's a there's a and therefore a very interesting and therefore gives you a very interesting supply of quantum integrable systems. What I've been what I've been explaining here is that uh, maybe in fact there's some kind of loop here. So there's a you know somehow you can you can this is like a relation with chicken and the egg. So you can start with a if you, have a, if you have an egg, you can get a chicken. If you have a chicken, you can get an egg, and uh, and and so then the this is there's some there's uh, there's in fact in 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 the um, you know, where I where I'm going because that there is also we will but we will maybe too late today but we'll see so there is a slightly different way to like maybe another vertex in this triangle there is a you can you can, there's a, so there's quantum groups by the work of, especially by the work of Nakajima, so there's like a geometric action of quantum groups, so geometric action of quantum groups. Which is maybe some, some loosely defined, some geometry, and you can, um, you can go uh, in the, the, there's some kind of triangle here where you can go in all possible directions. So, so instead of starting instead of starting with the uh, with the quantum group and getting solution Young Baxter and also getting a geometric action of the quantum group, you can maybe geometrically first construct the solution of Young Baxter equation. So if you geometrically construct the solution of Young Baxter equation, then you get by the yoga I explained, you can also get automatically a solution of quant uh, an action of a quantum group. So there's some geometric construction which I'll tr I was planning to explain today. Well, we'll see how far I can go. I'll get. So there's some. I guess so. You can, you can, you can. If you have a quantum group, you can get solution Young Baxter. You, if you have a solution of Young Baxter, you can get a quantum group. And now, if you're interested in some geometric incarnation of this picture. You can also you can you can um, you can have a different perspective of what we're going to get first. So first you can you can first geometrically define an action of a quantum group, and then of course you're going to get a solution Young Baxter, or you can geometrically define solution Young Baxter, then you're going to get a geometrically defined action of a quantum group. So there's a, <coughs> in other words, you can. You know. These things are really right. So I, I, I think I'm a. I, uh, you know, there's only so many paths you can take in a graph with three vertices and three edges, and so I think I took them all really many times. So, so this is, so first I'll, ex I'll explain this. And this was actually in the context of, first in the context of vertex models, for which the, the spin chain is not, a, I mean, it's, it's equivalent, but not, This Baxter's uh, Baxter's main interest. So, what's a vertex model? You have a graph, which is um, maybe. And you will start with some graph which looks like a regular graph, something like this. And so, right, the the uh, the lines in this graph are oriented. This is important. And then um, maybe some part of this graph which is 
which is not really a regular, so maybe I'll do something about it. All right, now on, on the edges of this graph, leave some degrees of freedom that takes values in some representation. So maybe say some representation, maybe I call it, I don't know this, to every line corresponds to, uh, corresponds to uh, representation, is called M1. And at every, at every, at every edge, uh, so representation corresponds to a line, uh, but the variables live on an edge. So for every, like, you know, from here to here, lives some variable, uh, be called sigma, you know, sigma of this edge. And then there's some other sigma, which is, sits on the server. And then um, this takes a value in this in this in this representation. And the interact via so if I have the count the vertex, so there's M one M two, and then there is sigma one. Sigma two, sigma two prime, sigma one prime, and there is a, an interaction weight, which is which is which is an operator. We can view this as a matrix element of an operator in a tensor product of these two. So we have sigma one, sigma two, sigma one prime, sigma two prime. This is this is really. And one is uh, the main interest is to compute is to compute the partition function of such model with some given boundary condition. So boundary conditions means I've uh, I assign I fix the variables at all. Uh, unbounded edges, so maybe I'll, so this sigma, this one fluctuates, but this, there's some, I don't know, there's some sigma, whatever, some, some. Okay. so to every unbounded edge, maybe, maybe there's an edge, this is edge E, and there's sigma of E, and then there's unbounded edge which I'll do not E of boundary, and then there is a sigma of E boundary. And so this means that the, the what the partition function means, it's a map from incoming boundaries, as incoming boundary and outgoing boundary are according to the orientation of my lines. And there's a there's a there's a map from the tensor parker of incoming guys to the outgoing one to depend by contraction indices in this in this in this time. Like typically the the most The most typical one is, is everybody's favorite is the partition function on the torus with periodic boundary conditions, where you draw this. And then you close all the slope signs. Then you get a number. Which is interpreted as a partition function. I mean, the geometry here is a, the graph list sits on the torus, and uh, and then uh, uh, you get the you know, 
uh, your sum over all possible values on all edges are bounded, so you get in your sum over all all possible indices in the uh, on this these edges, and there's some interaction strength, which is given by this this matrix, and so then you get so this would be this is this is everybody's favorite. And so this is this. Of course, you can compute this. So if maybe there is a so uh, maybe maybe let me add one more here so that to avoid further confusion. This this is this is slightly unconventional. Maybe uh, this is. Slightly unconventional contraction of indices, but to make it a more contra conventional contraction of indices, we can consider we can consider this this such operator here. So this would be going from maybe m1, m2, m3, so forth, and then there is some variable m0, and then we can contract this indices. So sorry, there's no equality yet. So that if there's this, if there is some, so this is maybe called, let's say m zero here, m zero prime here, m zero double prime there, and so forth, and then m one, m two, m three, so forth. This is this is an operator. This is as endomorphisms of the tensor product from i going from one to n, t i. And we will call this matrix T m zero. Then, then this. Contracted partition function of notorious is T and zero, T and zero prime, so forth. Oh, <laughs> interesting uh, audio effect. That that clear? So in particular, so, so let's say let's say that this is uh, so in particular, it'd be great if if these guys can be simultaneously diagonalized, that would be just great, because then we could compute the partition function on the torus by just, uh, well, if they're all diagonal matters, if they're diagonal in some basis, well, we'll just, we'll just multiply them all. Okay. And that would be the answer. So this are, so this is, so this is, um, this is called transfer matrix. In general, transfer matrix is a general notion in, in statistical mechanics or it's also in combinatorics. If you have some, some, uh, some combinatorial problem of, of the structure which, which has a product structure and you uh, break it in, in, in layers and then you, you can uh, Make some intermediate summation, then and then to express the overall summation as a product of matrices it's called the transfer matrix. So if by chance it turns out that this commute can be simultaneously diagonalized, then uh, then like I said, this is great because I mean, uh, for most uh, for many. Uh, So, um, uh, 
Uh, maybe it's uh, too late in the lecture to go into discussion of general features of statistical mechanics. Maybe there's, I, in the list of references, I gave a book by Jim Ben Mee, which is great. I mean, it, it's hard reading towards the, from the middle on, but the beginning is great reading, and so you can, you can, you can enjoy this. And so this is, in, 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 in two-dimensional statistical, I mean, general statistical mechanics, it's usually very hard to get, to get past the simplest, could get theoretically past the very simplest properties of, 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 of your models. Like, for example, if you know, if you know just, say, if you have a partition of function of the torus, and you just know how it's, like, the logarithm multiplication function scales as the torus gets larger and larger, this is already extremely valuable. And so this is, if you, if you have a way to diagonalize these matrices, then you'd know, for example, how would, what, what would be this, what would be the scaling of this partition function as, as, as say, this product gets longer and longer. It's harder, it's harder to know what will be if, if this product gets longer and longer, but if you will. So, <clears throat> and so Baxter's, uh, Baxter's uh, idea says that it's, the young Baxter equation is precisely a tool to produce commuting transfer matrices. So it's precisely so. Baxter's observation is that if, if you have a, if the vertex interaction, so, so the R matrix here is it's just a collection of numbers, which numbers parameterized by some basis in some vector space. Uh, and so there's uh, uh, it's no good reason to require anything special of that collection. But if it satisfies Young Baxter equation, then what the Young Baxter equation says, Young Baxter equation says that if I have uh, if I have three lines like this, that, so this is an operator from a, uh, from a, from a, It's an operator from product of three spaces. If this is uh, if this product equals the other pro the, in the other way around, you can have it like this or like that. In other words, if you can change your lattice by a move like this, without affecting the partition function, with with given boundary here, the boundary there's six there's six unbounded edges, so it means you have a you know, three valent tensor. Sorry, three lower three, uh, three upper indices. If this is satisfied, this is Young Baxter equation. And, and, and Baxter observation is precisely of Young Baxter equation, then the, then the transfer matrix is commute. Baxter. Um, Says that if the Young Baxter equation implies and Young Baxter and plus invertibility of R plus R is invertible, this implies that the transfer matrix is really commute. This is a, this is a remarkable argument. What does it, so, so how does it go? It says, then if I take, it says consider this diagram. And then uh, here we put the, I put the inverse here of the matrix up here. But and now the 
say this. So just here put like the, the inverse. So this is something we can consider. So if I assume it has an inverse, so, so then by so then by the Young Baxter move, we can take this triangle and we can and we can flip it. So it means so it means we but this would be equal to I start with this and then I cross. And then I continue. So it means I can I can bring this crossing all the way to here where will it cancel. And so then this means that this is equal to um, I should have put it in the uh, So this is this is just a product. This is T M zero T M um, zero prime. This is on the one hand. On the other hand, so not the product. This is just the, this the before I take the trade. So this is this is this is a product of things of which of which I will take the trace. T is the T is when I, the transfer matrix is when I take this uh, uh, I take this expression and take its trace. Now I don't I haven't taken the trace yet, but I can I can now take the trace and I'm gonna get the if I if I take the trace then uh, then trace over m0 tensor m0 prime, then I'm going to get t m0 t m0 prime. On the other hand, I could take trace here. So if I take this the same trace, then so here I have in my auxiliary space, so this 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 matrix this matrix R acts in this auxiliary space over which I take the trace. So I take the trace and go right to the again. Trace M0 tensor M0 prime. And this is where that so this crossing here and its inverse crossing there, this is where this R matrices act. R M0 R M0 prime. Okay. I have some operator, I have some operator, in, and I here I multiply by this matrix, and there I multiply by its inverse of that matrix. But of course, that's not going to change the trace. So under the trace side, this will be the same as the trace of, uh, or, or, you know, you can say you can. You can you can say it differently. You can say, what does it mean to take the trace? To take the trace, we can we can take this guy and, and loop it like that, right? This is what it means to take the trace. But if we loop it like this, that we can bring this then on the, on the cylinder, these two guys are just really together. And on the cylinder, this guy, so this guy just can't, just really cancel. On this, okay. Maybe, maybe, let's, 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 let's do it like this. Let's just loop this thing. And so here, here I can, here I, uh, means here, I get this, these guys are looped like this. 
and this is the T M zero T M zero prime. And um, and uh, on the other hand, if I just cancel it, just cancel it through the infinity, then I'm going to get whereas now M0 sits here and M0 prime sits there. So I'm going to get Tm0 prime Tm0. I must have said, I might have said many incoherent things in this talk, but this one thing is really, really simple, really beautiful. And so maybe if you have, you know, you may be confused about other things, but maybe if, I hope you understand this. If you don't, maybe we can pause and somehow discuss it more, because it's really busy. Uh, you know, ask, uh, if it's something not clear, maybe I can try to clarify it. And generalization generalization is supposed is this twisted boundary condition or quasi periodic. It means suppose let G be an operator in all MI. So if we think of like a group element that acts in all of these tensor products such that J tensor G commutes with all our measures. Then, then uh, and what you can do is you can define you can define a twist everywhere by identifying what does what happens here. Here, when we take the periodic boundary condition, it really means we take we take the degrees of freedom here on this outgoing edge. And really identify them with the ones on incoming here. Instead, we could use, so you know, if you remember the discussion of this quasi periodic uh, boundary condition in the spin chain, what you can do is you can act by, by some element G as you identify them. In other words, the, you, you define. This, this, uh, this, this transfer matrix you define as the trace of over M0 of G tensor 1. It's an element that acts in the first tensor pack in, the, in this factor only of times the R matrix of M0 and then the zero of tensor. Just like before, except when you take the trace, you can put, put a twist. And so what will happen in this picture? In this picture, we want to take, this means here, I can put G and G here. You see, G tensor G computes with our matrices. So I can bring this dot past this G and G. And the rest is the same. So I get, I get G, G, G. And 
Then this matrix is then T and zero. Four. So what do you compute what for, for any or a fixed G? <coughs> so, you know, so this depends. In other words, this is this is this is a function of a representation. And, and an element. And this means that this means the commutator of T M0 maybe G the commutator of T M0 prime G this commutator is 0. means this can be different but this are the same. discussion. We haven't seen a single R matrix yet. <laughs> and so for like the glory of the subject is there's more complicated R matrices which you can you know buy. I hope you can somehow motivate it enough to open some some literature on them. But there is a there's the simplest one of them which you always remember. Is that so this would be this will be an R matrix this Yang R matrix. Or it says so this is this operates in the tensor product of C C R tensor C R. And what it is is the R of U is one minus one over U times the permutation. In fact, for dimensional reasons, so for us, u will be some variable. It, it's best to put to, to introduce a new variable, which is just, just completely silly right now. But for geometric reasons, it's important because it's because this will be some this will be some meaningful. I mean, this will be some element, and this will be some element. It's like it's a, you know, it has some cohomological degrees. This dude yeah. here. Yeah, this solves young question. equation. You can uh, not not difficult to check directly, and so And so this commute, this commutes with whole GL. Okay. And so we get like this many choices. So the conclusion is that so if I take if I take this if I take and this R matrix we get we get the Yangian of GLR as a subalgebra in in uh, the product. You can and, and right and uh, if you take C R something A one we discussed the this uh, 
already for in the undeformed, this deforms it. This deforms uh, uh, the universal developing of uh, I mean, why is it why is it has uh, the same number of I mean, why does it uh, so this deforms deforms universal development of GL um, R times the polynomial is more variable. Uh, so as and so what? Um, so why is that? It's it's. Um, I mean, first, how many operators are we going to get? The so we get this really. Only one auxiliary representation you can get, so which is uh, I mean, this just just CR. Everything else would be so the matrix. So, so like if you, the, you take tensor products of auxiliary representation, you just you get just you know, products of uh, elements in the Yang. So the, the, but the number of generators would be just um, you take one auxiliary representation, so you get R square matrix elements there, and then you get uh, expansion. Expansion to infinity, which means, which means you get uh, countably many copies of of R by R matrices as your generator. Well, this is already this is already what you have here. And then if you take your R matrix, and you take uh, of course this R matrix, uh, it's uh, non-trivial matrix element all vanish modulo H bar. And if h bar is zero, then it's uh, you know, this matrix is one. But if you take it modulo h bar square, and you look at the coefficient of h bar, it's like just like we did with this uh, this reduced uh, virtual class type of computation. Then then in this in this form, it's easy to see that you get in fact you really get this universal elliptic algebra. I mean, how it, exactly how it acts in this, in this representation. So you get an algebra which is certainly going to be of the exact same size as this algebra. It's a, I mean, it's a, whole, it's a whole algebra the way we can. And it's only going to have, since um, it's only going to have one relation, namely corresponding to the one, plus, I mean, one kind of relation, I mean, corresponding to the one, one interesting, I mean, all intertwiners here, are, again, are just R matrices. Responding to the fact that in the commuter situation, it's just the permutation, and so um, and so uh, and so you're going to get just one kind of relation, and that would be the uh, that would be the uh, that's uh, that's that's the deformation, and then uh, so this has has um, Baxter. Um, Subalgebras parameterized by uh, by G, and the really different ones modular conjugate G in GLN modular conjugation in the center. So this really one of the interesting ones are of the form the red Z2 Z R. I, I know that not every element in GLN is conjugate to diagonal metrics, but uh, but uh, but this uh, the algebra they form well, this is The interesting really ones. And remember, we were interested in the case where r is equal to 2. So, uh, so in this case, we have this one. And so this, this, one, this one here, for r equals 2, everyone can check. Without the energy. 
with that energy. That summation I I plus one from one plus the one to n with this quasi periodic the condition. This quasi periodic the condition still long. It's not an entirely trivial computation, but it is something dumb. And so this this says that um, this this uh, this mechanism, this Baxter mechanism of producing many um, many commuting operators, it works not only for um, this uh, lattice model, but also for related uh, models of quantum this is, you know, quantum mechanics, namely in this case as a spin chain. It's this, it says that this is uh, this, this gives a big supply of I mean, this gives a maximum commutative subalgebra, in fact, of of operators that contain contain my Hamiltonian. And so, uh, and so, this is how uh, this is maybe halfway to solving. Because this is, uh, well, I don't know, I mean, it depends. Uh, maybe roughly halfway. So you have some operator, and you want to know its spectrum and the eigenvalues. Uh, sorry, eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. And then um, if, you've, uh, if you found the big uh, non-commutative algebra, some interesting non-commutative algebra, with a maximal, with a big commutative subalgebra, such that your operator belongs to the image of this commutative subalgebra, then then it's certainly a big success, and, um, and you can uh, you can you can count on being, but not count. You can somehow reasonably hope that studying further properties of this algebra, you'd be able to. Um, Oh no, I'm almost at the end of my lecture. So okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. So then somehow. Okay, I was I was saying saying general things anyway. So so um so studying properties of this uh of this um uh, algebra you, you may be able to you may be you, you may be able to actually diagonalize it. But uh the actual route which we're gonna take is different. So um so plan for there's only one vector remaining, and it's going to be a little tight because so maybe the plan for the remaining lecture to explain it. consists of two two things which we'll try to try to accomplish, and the first is to construct C, or maybe C, this R matrix. Geometrically. Because if you can see the R matrix by, uh, uh, then you can, um, like I said, you see the action, see the R matrix, see the action of the Yang. And uh, and the, the second thing is that the, is um, maybe so geometrically so. I've been going over time every single lecture since maybe with the except of lecture one. I've, uh, I've, uh, I was really hoping not to do it today. But, uh, but 
maybe I'll take one minute to explain since it's, a, it's important somehow. Find, maybe I'll write five eigenvalues. And I'm permitting eigenvectors. Geometrical. You see, the, the geometric, I mean, I guess that you, you, you live here in Kyoto, then you, you know that geometric representation theory is very powerful. But it's, it's powerful and somehow concretely powerful. It means you can, you can really solve problems Geometrical, which is hard to solve in general. And the reason it's hard is that suppose you have some, so remember we had this operator, which was this operator of quantum multiplication. Um, so, so plus, oh, which part, maybe, maybe minus here, doesn't really matter. So, um, let's take the pair. There's no sum, it's, it's just Grassmannian. So you pair this with the generator, the curve tick to one, and this is that R minus that yeah. A sort of expression. So some some matrix depends on Z. And you need to and the problem here, since this is this is belongs to the same algebra as this guy, is to to be able to diagonalize this operator. But geometrically, you can solve more general equations. So if you, if you look, if you uh, geometrically, you can solve equation of the following form. That if you have some function, so it's an equation for unknown function of psi. So if I take sub psi of z, and I will give myself some new variable called it epsilon, it will satisfy a creation of the form z d by dz is equal to Z. This is what's called quantum differential equation. Geometrically, there's a way to solve this. I mean, geometric is a solution to this equation. If you, uh, if you understand enough, somehow you can, there's a question of what you understand about the solution, but at least there's some solution. And this is strictly more general than solving the eigen, defining the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So suppose you have some equation of this form. And what's going to happen if this epsilon goes to zero? That if epsilon goes to zero in an equation like this, then then the uh, then the uh, then this the Weber equation and the coefficient in front of the of the of the derivative goes to zero, then the uh, solution is going to look like this. It's going to be um, so it's going to look like, like exponential one over epsilon, like the integral of the eigenvalue. Times the eigenvalue. So, if you understand enough about solving differential equation, you of course certainly understand enough about the, the eigenvalue problem. It gives you gives you this eigenvector and eigenvalue. And what Nikras Tashvili really computed, they computed this. This is this is easier to compute. This is this is an overall factor. I mean, if you imagine this is some matrix, and uh, this is some factor. And that and it's like enough to know one row of this matrix to compute this. And you know, we can, time permitting, we can talk about this. And so then this is they computed this, and then they uh, they see the spectrum. All right, so that's uh, this was five minutes over time. Is is uh, is all for today.